we started with this uh, project with Junyan Cao a couple of years ago. The idea was to prove some results and also to celebrate uh, two persons uh, joining the elegant club of over 70s gentlemen. So what you will see next, uh, it's somehow a updated version of that, of the paper. <laughs> so let's see now, uh, how do we move this? Okay. This is uh, how my talk will be structured. And let's start with a few, let's say, notations. We have here a proper smooth family such that all the fibers are color. And uh, as usual, we note Kx here, the canonical boundary of the uh, global family. And then let's assume that we have a, a line boundary on, on the total space on X. And for each uh, positive K, we consider this sheaf, Kx plus L twisted with this ugly beast, namely, so, so the, the, the sections uh, of this sheaf are um, holomorphic sections modulo t to the to the power k plus one. Okay, so it's d bar is not zero, but it's a multiple of this t to the power k plus one. If you, if you want, present it in a down to earth um, terms, and then of course we have a projection from f k plus one to f k, which is simply uh, the one you imagine, very natural. And then the, the main question that I would like to discuss next is, um, so let's say that we have a section here in this. Uh, Sorry? Oh, yeah, we have a, a, a section here in this uh, section. Hi, we lost you. We lost you at uh, your introduction of the FK sheaves. I see. All right. Well, okay, let's hope for, for uh, no more interruptions. Internet here has been, uh, you know, intermittent. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, so we, we have this, this sheaf FK, so like the, the holomorphic sections in K plus L modulo T to the power K plus one. And then um, together with the natural projection between two successive such sheaves. And then the, the question that I would like to discuss now in the what follows is, um, and under which uh, conditions, for example, positivity or uh, whatever, on L, uh, a section here in FK can be lifted, can be extended one step farther. Now, uh, so let's see what would be the, the main result. The main result is as follows. So now we assume that the, the boundary L is simply a multiple of the canonical boundary Kx. And then uh, we denote by L straight, if I may call it so, the, the restriction of L to X. And here we have a, we have a metric given by the, the right multiple of the, the section here restricted to the, to the central fiber. If you want to the, to the zero, zero infinitesimal neighborhood, the central fiber. And then, Another part of the data uh, is uh, of the hypothesis is that um, there is some extension of, uh, of S as let's say a smooth uh, section of K plus L such that, so the D bar is multiple of TK plus one. So this is of course not a hypothesis. The hypothesis is that we can find such a SK such that, uh, that this L2 hypothesis is satisfied for any epsilon positive. Okay. so. This is by no, no means guaranteed, given that here phi L uh, has, uh, has singularities, but uh, we assume that we can find such an extension SK. And then uh, the conclusion is that we can extend uh, our S one step farther, so S is in the image of pi K. Okay, so modulo this L2 hypothesis, which shouldn't be there as some of you know, but modulo this hypothesis, uh, the, we can do the, we can extend S one step farther. So yes, for uh, some, some more general result involving uh, so-called abstract line bundle L, not a multiple of the canonical. So I invite you to check, to have a look on the, the, the version of the web. So to put this result in, um, in a context, let's uh, recall the following. 
uh, of course, um, it's good to start with the classic, like Mosawa Takigoshi and so on. So let's say that uh, we have a Keller family uh, and the line bound along X together with a section of K plus L over the central fiber, <coughs> excuse me. So the, here the hypotheses are um, uh, that the, the curvature is semi-positive, but uh, on the total space and together with the natural L2 hypothesis. And then the conclusion is that we can extend uh, U to the whole space. So if you want, here um, we use defined for K equals to zero in the previous slide, and then we can extend up to K equals to infinity, so to speak, the, over the whole family. Of course, the, the big difference is that we have this positivity assumption over the whole, over the whole family. Another, another result, which is somehow in the same spirit, was established by Zawa de Mai Matsumura in 2016. And it says the following. So we have here the uh, still a, a Keller family as before, uh, together with the line bounder and the section of our sheaf FK, so holomorphic modulo T to the K plus one. Uh, again, the curvature is semi-positive on the global space. And, and then um, another hypothesis is that U admits an extension, UK, such that this uh, D bar UK divided by T to the power K plus one is the um, N1 form, which is which satisfies this L2 uh, hypothesis on the whole family. And then again, U extends from K to infinity to, to, the, to the whole space. Okay, so, uh, so it's somehow in the, in the same spirit. The, the big, big important difference is at this level that uh, in our case, we don't have any, any privileged metric uh, semi-positively curved on the whole space. So um, what would be uh, the motivation for this, uh, for this uh, infinitesimal extension, if you want? Of course, it comes from this uh, important conjecture of uh, Yung Tong Siu saying that um, pluricomical sections defined over the central fiber of the Keller family extend to, to the whole X. And um, it is somehow, um, let's say, agreed among the people who work on this problem that it's not just a problem, it's not a problem just in itself, but rather what we have to understand, what are the new tools we have to develop in order to solve it. In any case, what is known is that um, this was solved in Yung Tong, by Yung Tong Siu in 2002 for, uh, for projective families, so it's, okay. uh, it's an embedding in the projective space. And it's uh, one of the very important tools in the finite generation of canonical rings, so-called famous BCHM. And just to tell you why projective, well, projective, uh, it's, it's needed because the, the, the proof uh, used in an essential manner, this linear series of uh, linear systems, multiple of kx plus a, where a is the ample line bundle. So I cannot do it without this ample line bundle and the tricky uh, properties of, of these linear systems. But uh, okay, a must be there and it's not in the Keller case. Still in the, in the, in the setup of, uh, of the, the main theorem that I stated before the, um, for the Keller uh, families, the, the particular case of Mark Levin was, was known. So he was um, using Hodge theory in the non-reduced uh, non uh, setting. We somehow limit uh, the, 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 the singularities he can admit for this section we want to extend. Okay, so as... Um, uh, I'm a very, very optimistic person, and I think that you can follow everything very quickly online just like that. I will uh, um, uh, discuss the proof of this, of this result. Just I will, the idea is to overview somehow the main steps, okay, of course. So we have at hand this section SK, which is uh, this multiple of lambda K. 
And we are interested in the, the, the restriction lambda chi divided by dt. So this, I hope the notation is very clear. So um, lambda k is a n, n plus one, one form. So of course it's divisible by dt. So we take the restriction to the, to the central fiber x. And then uh, give, given this equation here, uh, what we know about lambda k is that it's bar closed on the central fiber. And then the, the conclusion, so what we want to achieve is equivalent to the fact that uh, lambda k is d bar exact. Okay, so, but here we only require this on the central fiber. Okay, that's an that's a di important difference with respect to the usual setting when we, are, we try to solve the d bar equation on the space, uh, total space x. And then, uh, so in trying to do so, showing that lambda k is d bar exact, um, the first step would be to do the following, to show that in fact, um, this lambda k, thanks to the property we have here, can be written uh, in the image of the operator d bar and d prime. Um, I mean, so the, the, on the central fiber and, point-wise in the complement of uh, this set S equals to zero. So D prime is the, the covariant, covariant derivative uh, corresponding to this, to this L and the singular, singular connection. And um, so this is certainly a good news because it looks like what it should, right? If we have a look at the Hodge theory, this, if alpha and beta would be smooth, we would be done, but that's of course not the case we only have coefficients here. Uh, smooth divided by some powers of the section S. And who's responsible for that? You will see it in a moment here. So let's see how we go about this, uh, this claim. Of course, we have this equation on the top total space. We want to get rid of this uh, multiple t to the, to the power k plus one. So the most natural idea would be to uh, simply take the derivative of that with respect to t. And of course, we are on a manifold. We cannot take derivatives just like that. So we have to construct some, some intrinsic objects with, which will do this for us. And this is, um, uh, those are very, very well known. So we construct a D derivative in order to do that. So the, the covariant derivative that we will take is the one induced by the extension we have at hand. So it would be singular here. So again, fk is just C infinity, but still the formula still makes sense. And in the end, we will restrict on the central fiber. So uh, fk is uh, honestly an uh, holomorphic section uh, function. And then another, uh, another object here is that uh, is a vector field a smooth vector field on the whole family, which is d over dt plus something else. Okay, so this is the existence of such object is standard. And then we define the lead derivative acting on forms of this type. We simply contract with the vector field here, xi and take d prime. Okay, so in doing so, of course, uh, we get some, uh, map between those spaces, but it's not exactly correct because we get some poles, right? Because of prime here, it's singular. Nevertheless, so we can, uh, we can um, use the lead derivative for this equation. And what we get on the right-hand side, it's not difficult to guess. It's simply this, right? So we take the derivative, this lowers the index here with one degree. And then on the left-hand side, let's see. So we said that we take the uh, contraction with xi and then we take the d prime. So when you commute xi and d bar, you get this term here. And then um, uh, commuting d, d prime and d bar, then you will get uh, something like the curvature form. So the, 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 the formula will look, I mean, you'll, you'll replace this plus uh, by this expression here. So somehow given, given the, the type of the connection that, that we choose, the curvature term here has uh, influence on the right-hand side, if you want, it becomes this. So after one derivative, this equation transforms like that. So we lower the index here, which is what we wanted. 
but we have some additional um, guy here in the image of D prime. And moreover, this guy is uh, singular, right? Because D prime is the, is the case for D prime. Now, we would like to do this, uh, to repeat this process in order to get rid of T to the K. And then the, the important remark here, because we have a new enemy uh, here, D prime of this uh, form. So the, the remark is that when we take a D bar of Xi, so Xi was D over DT plus something, so the D bar kills D over DT. So the, the, the contraction is still multiple of DT. Of, um, and then the lead, lead derivative of D prime of such object has the same shape. Now this is just a differential geometry uh, formula, uh, rather long, but uh, nothing spectacular is happening here. So the point is now that um, we can do this, that, uh, we can repeat this process, right? So we can iterate this process. So after K plus one derivatives, if we are at this point. And the shape of alpha and beta, of course, it's, uh, if you have the curiosity of doing this already if after two derivatives, it gets very complicated, but we know that we know that uh, the coefficients would be meromorphic forms um, of the type indicated in the claim. Okay, so let's say that we have this, um, this equality here at this point. And now the, the, the point is that uh, this um, uh, equation can be obtained without any L2 hypothesis, but the L2 hypothesis that we have at the beginning, which was exactly this one on the central fiber, um, now this one uh, can be somehow used in order to improve alpha and beta here to make to to re replace the ugly ones that we have here, the beautiful ones, which is uh, which by which we mean the I mean the following. So we take a low resolution of the of the divisor. So the divisor of F is a maybe very singular uh, hypersurface, and we make this uh, divisorial and uh, with a simple normal crossing of the support. So we, we write the components like E plus F, you will see why E plus F in one second, in one click. So somehow the, this equation, uh, so we take the pullback of, of uh, the, the integral on X hat, and then due to some arithmetic uh, uh, conditions here with the M and the vanishing order of S. What you can what you can do is to transform lambda K in a form with values in E plus L, where E is uh, has this shape, and L has the, this metric with coefficients strictly between zero and one. Okay, this makes the difference between these two type of components here. And then, so if we change the notation and uh, alpha and beta and lambda and everything, so we can forget about everything else. Now our equation looks like that. Lambda k, lambda k divided by the, let's say the, the section associated to this. It's in the image of d bar plus d prime as here. But now the, the novelty is that we can assume that those alpha and beta have logarithmic poles. That is a huge gain that we have uh, out of this uh, simple normal crossing condition and out of this L2. Okay, so, so we transform this equation, which is rather unfriendly into something with log poles, which, okay. And then, uh, so now let's look at this, uh, this uh, equation a little bit uh, closer. Um, so uh, we can assume alpha equals to zero to start with simply by moving this term on the other, on the other hand, on the other side and uh, uh, observing that SE times alpha is, uh, is uh, regular because alpha has um, uh, log poles. And then somehow the heart of the matter would be to um, establish, the, establish the following general statement. So here, um, omega c uh, would be a metric with, let's say, uh, conic singularities, but coefficients are uh, standard, like 1 minus 1 over m, where well, 1 minus 1 over some integer, which is divisible enough so that the coefficients that we have in the curvature of L 
uh, uh, so when multiply with this here, we, we become integers. Okay, so we need this, uh, this uh, to work with respect to this sort of metric. And then uh, we have a Hermitian line bound on X, which, which looks like that. The curvature is has some divisorial part, and we allow some some smooth semi-positive one-one part in the curvature. And then we also consider this time an NQ form for Q at least one, a form with values in L plus E. So uh, and we assume that uh, we can find forms beta one and beta two with this sort of log poles in uh, E plus the singularities that this metric has, such that we have uh, the, the quotient lambda divided by SE is in the image of D prime of beta one plus this smooth part of the curvature wedge beta two. So, uh, so um, and you will see, so if we ignore here alpha, which we said that we can do, that's exactly the type of hypothesis we are here in two. So we assume that this holds pointwise in the complement of this divisor. And the conclusion is that lambda is d bar exact, which is exactly our, which was exactly our goal. So, so this is uh, somehow the, the main result which makes uh, things work at, at this point. And of course, if this slide is called DD bar lemma is for obvious reasons, right? Because um, it is uh, somehow if you have the generalized version of the usual DD bar lemma in the, in the Hodge theory. Here, if you have the novelty is that we allow the curvature of L to, to be part of the story. And still, if we have the right sign, which means uh, uh, positive, then we can draw the same conclusion. Now, just I will uh, just comment one second about the, 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 the tools that we use in order to, to prove such a result. Of course, since uh, it's about DD bar lemma, no wonder that uh, host decomposition comes into the picture. It's a little bit more general version than what we learn in school as host decomposition, but still, given that we are in a very um, uh, somehow um, friendly situation, having here singularities, but which are, um, so that the conic singularities are, are of the standard so, so type uh, or, or default type. So the only reason we need this is uh, because of the singularities we have in L and still get, a, we need a, a complete analog of the host decomposition, which we can do by simply mimicking the, the usual proof. And another piece of, uh, of uh, information, if you want, is that we have we are able to establish as a consequence of this version of um, host decomposition, and we have the so-called the Ramco-Dayal decomposition for currents, uh, which are induced by log, for, log forms with log points. Now, um, uh, so the Ram and Kodaira prove that if we have a current on the manifold of a PQ type, then you can write it as, we can define his projection on, on the space of harmonic forms and plus the Laplace of the, the green operator of some other current. Okay, so, so the, the host decomposition holds if you, uh, provided that it is uh, written and interpreted in, a, in, the, in the right way, in the sense of current. And if you want, uh, one of the, the first uh, very nice application that I know of that was by Judon Noguchi, who showed that actually holomorphic forms with log poles are closed. In, in, his, uh, in his proof, this was somehow the Kodera uh, Deram decomposition for currents, was uh, the, the first I think very nice, spectacular, if you want, uh, application of these techniques. Somehow we do something like that here. Okay, so this, we use it for this type of currents and then, well, a few things are happening um, and uh, we are able to show that, we're able basically to use that, uh, the, 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 uh, the familiar, um, uh, like um, the, the, the familiar duality, duality argument to say that lambda, which the, the form of the right degree, um, is bounded by the quantity that you know. 
So, um, <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, I cannot, I cannot uh, go farther into, into the details of this, but um, somehow, if you remember these keywords, I think that's rather, that's good enough. And in any case, this solves the problem here. So um, for Q equals to one, we have exactly what we are waiting for, we're expecting that lambda is um, um, uh, d-bar exact. Fine, so let me um, uh, now uh, present an uh, application of, of this, uh, this d-bar lemma. And uh, it's, that statement is the, is the following. So we have a compact Keller manifold together with a simple normal crossing divisor uh, E. And we have also a line bundle, which here is called F, which is endowed with a metric non-singular, well, this exists after all, non-singular metrics, such that the, the curvature is semi-positive. So it's a semi-positive, Hermitian semi-positive line bundle. And we also have a holomorphic section of some multiple, uh, but uh, it has the, the, the property that when we restrict to any uh, intersection of the components of E, this is not vanishing identically, okay? And then the, the conclusion is that the map this section induces in cohomology for HQ, in these uh, forms, so NQ forms with values in E plus F, is injective for any Q positive, obviously. No. So this is uh, one of the um, results in a whole, whole industry called injectivity theorems. And then um, I put here some, some, some of the contributor started with uh, Tanke, Kola, and Osawa, um, maybe uh, somehow at the, at the beginning. Some many things happen in the meantime. and. In uh, nowadays, um, maybe the, the main contributor would be here, like uh, Fujino, Chan, and Choi, and uh, Matsumura. Somehow, in, and if X is projective, this was established by uh, Osamu Fujino, and he asked this question in one of his uh, work, like um, some time ago. Um, uh, in the meantime, many particular cases were established, but um, somehow uh, not in this degree of generality. So let's see what this has to do with, uh, with the DB bar lemma. So um, I will only discuss a very particular case when this uh, zero set of, uh, of the section which gives the map is a smooth hypersurface with Y. And then things, uh, since we have the, this hypothesis that S restricted on any intersection is um, uh, non-vanishing, non-identically vanishing, then uh, of course uh, the sum here would be, uh, would have a simple number crossing. And then so let's take an NQ form alpha with values in uh, this um, E plus F such that when we multiply it with um, S, then it becomes D bar exact. And then we will do something horrible. We will divide by S and S E. So of course, this equation will still hold, but uh, naturally in the complement of the zero set of those, right? Because, I mean, we didn't solve the problem, right? We just reform reformulate this uh, equality here. And now, so the idea is to somehow do something with this form in order to make it look like uh, in the image of the D prime plus eventually something having to do with the coverage of F. And then uh, this is done as follows. So let's say that we consider the following metric on, on F, like uh, the, this convex combination of the, the smooth metric that we have, uh, this phi F, and a small fraction of the, uh, of the section S itself. Okay, this, this defines a new metric on, on F which of course looks at the first sight like a crazy thing to do because we have here a perfectly smooth semi-positively curved metric and we replace it with something which is singular. But the idea is that um, by using this, uh, by using the singularities of this, this metric, we can construct these forms uh, theta, beta one and beta two, 
such that this new form here has only log poles along E as opposed to this one, which has poles along E plus Y. And then the, the other ones, beta one, beta two, they have log poles along uh, E plus Y. So once again, the, the, in order to do this, the singular part of the, of the metric is crucial. Okay, so, so somehow we do simple manipulations with this and uh, vector fields, smooth vector fields tangent, um, tangent uh, to, to, to Y, in the tangent, uh, in the logarithmic tangent, excuse me, uh, uh, associated to y, and then uh, by by contraction and derivatives, we can replace this with uh, the, this. Uh, so we, the idea is we can eliminate the poles of um, the poles of along y. And now, so if we combine this equality, which holds again in the complement of the sum, with the the previous one. It follows that we have this new expression, lambda minus d bar of this form divided by SE is in the image of d prime plus theta f. Now this is again uh, in the complement of this uh, divisor, but the, 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 as opposed to this equality, it holds in the sense of currents on the whole, uh, on the whole manifold on X. And anyway, in any case, we can apply the, the, the Previous result and uh, showing that, uh, which gives us precisely that this difference is uh, is the deeper exact, and so that's the case for lambda. 